My name's David Taylor and I'm a cancer survivor. Um, I know that my survival depend, and the survival of thousands of people like me depended on animal research and I wanted to ask you some questions about the research you do and with your colleagues here at Barts in London Medical School. So my particular research is focused around um, ovarian cancer um, and also not just the malignant cells in the cancer, but the other half of the cancer. Because mm -hmm. you may think that cancer is all about malignant cells and you may think a cancer is, is, is essentially a, a, a lump of malignant cells. Mm -hmm. But within that cancer, the, at least 50% of the cells will be normal cells of the body that are recruited by the cancer to help it grow and spread the blood vessels, but also cells of the immune system and builder cells, because cancer is a bit like a rogue organ. Does that make sense? That makes sense, yes. Is that we cannot model the complexity mm -hmm. of this rogue organ entirely if we do it ex vivo, mm -hmm. i.e. out of the body, growing it in the laboratory. Yeah. It's just too complex, we don't have the technology, we can't even create a normal organ, you know, mm -hmm. people try now with tissue engineering to grow new kidneys for kidney patients, we can't do that, it's even more complicated. So although a majority of our research is carried out in the lab using computers and also very importantly using patient samples, mm -hmm. One component, one part of the jigsaw puzzle is supplied by working in mouse models of cancer. Mm -hmm. These days one hears more and more about alternatives to using animals. The only things we can do without animals, and all of us who do research with using animals, cancer research using animals, it's part of our ethos, it's, it's in our DNA if you like, mm -hmm. to reduce, refine and replace. So. We don't want to use animals, and we only use mice in, in, in my type of cancer research. In fact, in really in cancer research in general, the majority of, vast majority of research is done on, on mice or, or zebrafish. Um, but we only use them if there is no alternative. And it's the thing like understanding the entire cancer which is very important, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is understanding how cancer spreads. Because as a cancer spread, the cancer cell, probably helped by some of those other cells mm -hmm. in, in, in the cancer, has to leave its first location. Mm -hmm. It has to then get into a blood vessel or a lymphatic. It has to travel around the body, then it has to get out of that vessel, go somewhere else, and set up another uh, deposit. Mm -hmm. Metastasis kills. Metastasis yeah. kills. It's not the primary tumours that kills in most cases, it's metastasis. Mm. Because a lot of people will say, uh, in, in what way at all are mice relevant to human yep. beings? Yeah, no, you could say, well, well, what's a hairy nocturnal animal got to do with, uh, you know, a, a, a two legged, non hairy animal that generally isn't nocturnal, or most of mm -hmm. us aren't nocturnal? Um, but the fact is that most of the hormones, most of the organs, most of the immune system, and anything else you can name of a mouse, mm -hmm. is exactly the same as in humans. There are important differences, and we can't mm -hmm. completely translate from mouse to man. A model is a model is a model. But to me, mouse models of cancer are as important as the tissue culture we do, the molecular biology we do, the computer models we use, the computer programs we use, all of these fit together, the patient samples, but the, the mouse models just add an important dimension, give us important mm. information. Is it, and I, I've heard that, that, that every year more and more mice are being used in medical research in the United Kingdom. Is that true? Or? Um, it is true at the moment, and there's a very good reason for that. That's because of all the advances we've made in, un in genetic engineering and understanding DNA from mouse and humans. 
Um, what we're able to do is we have, say, 20, 30,000 genes in, in human genes. And many, 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 80, 85 percent, I, I can't give you the, I should know the exact figure, but it's between 80 and 90 percent for all our genes are exactly the same as a mouse's genes, and they do the same job. We need to know, to cure many diseases and understand many diseases, what every gene does in our body. And you're able to find that out or get very, very close information on that, accurate information, by knocking that gene out in a mouse mm -hmm. and finding out what happens. You can find out a lot about that gene if you do that. Now, it's not going to tell you everything, and it's not going to be the end of the story. But just at this moment in time, there's, if you like, a bulge Mm -hmm. in mouse numbers um, because we're knocking out all the genes. Mm -hmm. In a few years' time, we'll have all that information. We won't need to do these experiments again. People talk about, or one hears about, personalised medicine and yeah. personalised or highly personalised therapies for yes. cancer yes. Uh, being developed in the, in the future. Yeah. With this happening, can using mice as models for research still yeah, make sense? Ab absolutely, um, because um, what is clear, I, I use the example of the cancer I work on, ovarian cancer. We used to say ovarian cancer arises from the ovary and it spreads throughout the peritoneal cavity. Now, it's only in the last five years this has become true, is that the major form of ovarian cancer that kills women arises from the fallopian tube, not the ovary. Mm -hmm. Other forms of ovarian cancer and don't come from the ovary, they come from the gut and they metastasize the peritoneum. Other forms come from the uterus. Mm -hmm. And so ovarian cancer is actually not ovarian cancer, it's a number of different subtypes. And so with that information, genetic driver, we can make genetic models of all those different subtypes. Um, some anti-vivisection campaigners have called medical research using animals a false science. What would, you, what would you say to them? No, it's not a false science. As I say, it's a component of medical research. Does animal research play as important or central a role today in the discovery of new treatments and therapies? Yes, it's, it's still an essential component. What's happened, of course, is that we have so much more, so many tools, so many more tools mm -hmm. at our disposal. Um, and so many different ways of doing biomedical research compared with 50 years ago, which is amazing. And the pace of research, the pace, for instance, of cancer research is just absolutely extraordinary yeah. at the moment and awesome and exciting. But we still need those biological models. We still need to do some of the work in mouse models of cancer to prove things that have been found in other systems to be true, and also to test new treatments. But can a computer nowadays or cell cultures replicate these things? Cell cultures or? can do some things very, very definitely. A computer can do some things. But if you want to study the complexity of the tumour microenvironment, all the cells that make up that rogue organ that's cancer, if you want to study metastasis, which is what kills patients, at some point you have to go into mouse models. I suppose the, the, but the new focus on, 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 yes, on genetics and the DNA side of things makes the use of mice even more relevant and necessary in a strange way. Yes, yes it does, because we, we have, we're seeing an, an increasing complexity mm. in the number of tumour types and subtypes and everything, and it, it, it makes it even more important to be able to model that in a mouse. And, and the use of, of, of more... DNA and, and genetics-based therapies, does that mean that the how we use the animals in research yes, changes? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, we use, I'm thinking of um, uh, a genetic model of pancreatic cancer in mice that another group in my centre used the whole time. And whereas before we do maybe use very large numbers of mice, mm -hmm. what they do now is use much smaller numbers of mice that you keep alive for almost their entire lifespan because the cancers develop very late on as they often do, mm -hmm. usually do in humans. And there will be screening techniques to pick those cancers up early, which stops them my suffering. Mm -hmm. the, and the techniques that you use on patients like ultrasound, 
MRI, PET scanning are increasingly being used in mice. So we can get an enormous amount of information out of one single little mouse, mm -hmm. you know? And so we use less mice. It costs us more money because we have to keep them for longer, but mm -hmm. from an ethical point of view and the uh, reality of how it relates to human cancers, it's a much better system. You can almost say that we have mouse hospitals now. And mm -hmm. in some places, they actually say, in some research institutes, they say we have a mouse hospital. And so you detect a cancer early in your mouse and then you put it into a mouse clinical trial. And, and that's the vision of many researchers at the moment. If I could ask about the role of uh, medical or animal research uh, in detection and prevention of cancers? Well, again, I think it's absolutely critical because um, now we have this genetic models um, and we know that they evolve like the human disease, then you can do a lot of pilot experiments in mice to see how soon you can detect things. For instance, um, there's a lot of sort of nanotechnology approaches to look at mutated DNA in the blood of, of, of people. And you can use the mass models as your first pass to find the best technique. Looking to the future, how do you see uh, research into cancers and cancer treatments developing? We're in the golden age of cancer research. Mm -hmm. I think the progress is, is, is staggering and very mm -hmm. exciting. So we're in a much better place than we were 10 years ago. But we're also uncovering a greater complexity. On the other side, I think that combining some of these new treatments with treatments that target the tumour microenvironment and the immune system and manipulate that, which maybe we think have a broader a broader application than some of the very specialised targeted treatments, um, that I think that's the exciting way forward. But coming back to the animals, the only way we can really prove that they have potential in patients is after a lot of other work, we're going to have to go back to the mass models.